Okay, now, specific to the two-way radio situation. Very important, again, two is one, one is none. Just like I was talking about in the power tools, that uh, construction work, power tools, handyman work, when you buy a uh, cordless power tool set, it usually comes with two batteries. The rationale on that is that at any given time, one is likely to need to be on the battery charger, and the other is in use. The same thing is going to happen with these two-way radios, especially like the modern, the Baofeng, the Chaoji, uh, the Chinese-made two-way radios. are very nice, convenient, and compact. No, I'm not showing the front of it uh, because there's a, a communication security issue. Uh, with those radios, they use cell phone batteries. Now, a lot of cell phones transmit at half watt. A lot of these two-way radios can be kind of hot-rotted a little bit to transmit up to 5 watts. What happens? It burns down batteries very quickly. So expect to be hot swapping radios very frequently on a recharger. Now, if you saw part one of this little mini series on communication security and how the, the phone swap pile program works, uh, you'll realize there is a variation it used with the two way radios. One, go for cheap two way radios. If you're going to be part of one of the groups that I coordinate with, we'll show you where on Amazon. Uh, you can buy these radios very inexpensively, 15 to, 15 to $40 each. You don't have to get the UV5R. You can actually get a lot done with the lower models. They just need um, a little bit more effort in programming, but once it's programmed, it's just fine. In fact, there's one particular model that will link here in a few days, probably not immediately, which shows that uh, for $15 a radio, you can have relatively secure communications. The other thing is, you know, of course, your FRS, your GMRS radios. Now, when you buy those radios, each one comes with a Walmart charger. They may not come with a vehicle charger. Uh, for every two radios, try to get one vehicle charger. Now, when they come with a Walmart charger and you go to the situation where you're handing in a radio and you, at any given time, you're going to be hot swapping radios. You keep one charger for yourself. The other one gets handed in with the radio. The people who are managing those radios only need one charger for every two radios because half the time those radios are handed out. So you're not handing everything in. You're going to keep one charger out just in case for yourself, uh, maybe not on your gear, but in your stuff, in your vehicle, in your camp, something like that. Uh, but it's very important to have the two radios so that you can hot swap and always be turned on with communication. Now. Granted, there's going to be some people that don't do this, or who aren't hip to it, or said, hey, listen, I've got the $600 Yesu, I'm not going to go in with two $600 Yesus and hand in any of them. Well, I understand that. That's why, you know, we're going to ask that for the hand-in type situation, use a cheap radio, okay? If you have your own $600 radio, okay, good for you, but also realize that when you are actually in an operation, a security operation, Somebody's going to be coordinating a lot of radio chatter to make sure that nobody has gone offline. Okay, you're, you're, you're too far apart for everybody to have eyes on everybody. So what happens is, you know, everybody expects to hear from somebody within, you know, every 10 or 15 minutes or whatever the checkpoint uh, call-in time is. And um, if something, a situation is developing and you're having to talk a lot, then what happens is, you, you know, you can kill your batteries. And that's one of the differences between expensive radios and not so expensive radios is the cheap radios will go through batteries because they use cell phone batteries. Uh, so remember, two is one, one is none. You're going to have to take two batteries, uh, I'm sorry, two, two radios and be able to hand them in. If you use a more expensive radio, the Yesu, the Cottonwood, the Icom, then I understand you, you just want to hang on to that yourself. You're not going to turn that in. Uh, you're not going to put that at risk of loss and the confusion or anything like that. Then have your own spare battery, have a vehicle charger, and expect for the, the radio uh, coordination people to, you know, have some power available for you. It, it should happen. But my recommendation is just go with the cheap radios, go with the hand-in situation so that you can always hot swap a radio and nobody's at great risk. In, in getting those back. Now, if you want your same exact radios back, then mark them. Okay, mark them in some way. Uh, one of the things I kind of like is these 
Sharpie markers with a colored thing. You don't necessarily put your own name and social security number on a radio. You just kind of put a, a regular designated marking. And I hope people are going to be honest enough to say, hey, listen, this is so-and-so's radio. It goes back in a pile and gets back to you. Um, with an equipment custody chain, it's one of the ways of testing how honest the people are that you're working with, how honest and careful they are. And I've done it with more expensive stuff where we just call it the $100 background check. You can background check people all day long. And if you leave something of value out and it's stolen or taken and then not accounted for, you're dealing with dishonest people, no matter what their background check says. And I ran into that with the Army National Guard in, in Oregon. Okay, In California, it, with the unit that I was in California, we never had a problem with stolen, stolen shit. Never had it once. Uh, I get to Coos Bay, Oregon, and uh, you, you couldn't leave shit out. You know? Now, I heard that the, the guard units in Southern California, they had that problem. You, know, you couldn't leave shit out. Uh, dare I say that uh, <clears throat> race and ethnicity ethnicity had something to do with that? Dare I say? But when that was in California, uh, when we got to Oregon, it was a little different situation. It was a class issue, and there were people who felt that they were better than others. Uh, everybody was white; they were all white units. Uh, some people felt they were better than others and had a right to take other people's shit. And I saw it happen again and again, and it was usually somebody who felt like they had some kind of authority to confiscate other people's shit. And it was one of the reasons why, um, uh, oh gosh, what battalion was it? One battalion had three former rangers quit, because one of the guys, his, his, he had a really nice Black Rock backpack, you know, a little day pack with all the good shit. And somebody took his pack and my pack, supposedly, to search him because they, they felt we were, like, not trustworthy individuals or they saw that we had different gear that wasn't quite uniform. Um, I caught the guys going through my pack, and I threatened them. The other guy's pack never turned up, and he got pissed, and I understand why. And, uh, of course, you know, finger pointing and blame. Somebody starts pointing a finger at me because I was in the gear business at that time. And it's like, listen, my duffel bag's here. My gear's right here. You know, where's it at? And we figured out that, you know, it was somebody in his own unit who uh, stole his shit. And the guy had joined the unit with two other guys. They were, you know, good people. And they quit that unit because they just said, listen, we're getting ripped off. If you can't trust somebody not to steal your gear, you can't go to war with them. Simple as that. Simple as that. If you can't trust them not to steal your gear, you can't go to war with them. And that's something to understand on any of these semi-formal type of uh, uh, deployments. You might as well sort that shit out before rounds start flying. Because if somebody's stealing shit, you've got a problem right there. And uh, so anyway, these two videos I'll be uploading soon. If you have any questions, comments, uh, or, or want to thumbs up me, please do. If you want to thumbs down me, go fuck yourself. Um, and we'll be discussing more in the forums.